Welcome to Audit the Audit, where we sort out the who and what and the right and wrong of police interactions. This episode covers police detentions, identification laws, and criminal harassment, and is brought to us by Let's Exchange IDs with Travis Hines' channel. Be sure to check out the description below and give them the credit that they deserve. Before we dive into the interaction, I want to give a big thanks to the sponsor of this episode, Surfshark. Surfshark is a premier VPN service that offers unparalleled digital security for a fraction of the price of other competitors. We all know that Surfshark is one of the most secure VPN tunnels on the market. But a Surfshark subscription also allows its users to bypass region restrictions on popular platforms like YouTube and Netflix and view content that is not normally available in your country. Thanks to Surfshark, I can still catch my favorite episodes of Friends, even though it was removed from the US Netflix catalog. A Surfshark subscription is totally unlimited, which means that you can use it on as many devices as you like, and even on all of them at once. No other VPN service offers that much accessibility. Right now, Surfshark is offering the ATA community an 83% discount with an additional four months completely free. With 24-hour customer service and a 30-day money-back guarantee, you have absolutely nothing to lose. So click the link in the description to claim your exclusive offer now. Thanks again to Surfshark for sponsoring this episode. On November 2nd, 2021, traveler, YouTuber, and urban camper Travis Hines entered City Hall in Bethany, Missouri to inquire about the parking situation in the area. Can I help you? Well, yeah, I'm I'm having difficulty with the parking. Um, what do you mean, mean well, with the parking? Wh where's the sections for the two hours? Because uh, I'm a little confused. Uh, there's, I was going to choose some spots around the library. I want to go to the library, but there's this, there's these two-hour parking spots. And does anybody ever have problems with parking around here? No. Oh, okay. Well, I, I feel very unique in that matter because I'm, I'm really miss. I'm really can you direct me to the person I need to talk to about the parking situation? Well, if you have a problem with the yep. parking situation... Yeah, because I don't know, because I'm parked right in front of City Hall. I can tell you... Is that a problem with the two-hour parking in front of City Hall? I don't know where you keep coming up with this two-hour parking. There's a, there's, I saw two signs. Do you, need, do you need me to show you a picture of that? No. That got, are you pranking me right now, or what? are you really serious? I don't I'm think I don't. I get the impression you you don't realize how bad the like the streets are and the parking is. Then you're 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 not you're not uh, really uh, under you're not really. Mr. Hines voiced his concerns about two-hour parking signs near the library. And after several minutes of discussion, a city hall employee called the Harrison County Sheriff's Office to assist with the situation. I mean, the parking is a lot better um, up north in those cities that I've been to. I guess I got called, um, or you guys are just here for me. Yeah, we're here for you. Okay, all right. Um, I'm not. You want to direct? If he's pranking me, if he's pulling my leg, or if there's something wrong, um, he's very concerned about the parking. And we're gonna get a phone. We've got a GoPro on our chest, so we're obviously hey, recording. Hey, why don't you have a seat right here? Have a seat. Yeah. What's we're it? We're gonna go talk to them in the back and find out what's going on. All right. Well, just that, that, all right, yeah, because you didn't you didn't hear the conversation, no, so no, but we'll talk to you too. So, <clears throat> all right. Well, I'm the one that they called the cops on. I guess they buzz buzz the cops on, and I, was, I parked right out here, and I was asking about the parking situation. Apparently, we can uh, park across the street. <clears throat> Cause I mean, right you you know about the two hour signs, right? The two hour limits. Are you blocking me from exiting? Is I'm trying that... to figure out why I'm being called. Okay, well I, I guess you want to talk okay. to it. Yeah, all right, fine. Have a seat for me. You want to talk to the? Have a seat for me. What's the problem? What's the crime? I'm just trying to figure out what's going on. Have a well, seat I'm, for me. I've, I've been sitting in my car for all morning. I just want to. Okay. So, I mean, I'll move over if you're afraid I'm going to escape. I mean, am I being detained? Officer Harris orders Mr. Hines to take a seat after having blocked his attempt to exit the building. But when Mr. Hines asks if he is being detained, Officer Harris insists that he is not. When an individual is detained by a police officer, they have been seized within the meaning of the Fourth Amendment, according to a long line of Supreme Court precedent. However, whether or not an individual is considered to be legally detained is not always a black and white determination. In the well-known 1968 case of Terry versus Ohio, the Supreme Court explained that, quote, obviously, 
Clearly, not all personal intercourse between policemen and citizens involves seizures of persons. Only when the officer, by means of physical force or show of authority, has in some way restrained the liberty of a citizen may we conclude that a seizure has occurred. As time went on, the Supreme Court clarified this standard by adding the Mendenhall test, named for the case where it was first introduced in a concurring opinion, to the considerations involved in determining if an individual has been seized. In the 1991 case of California v. Hodari D., the court explained that the Mendenhall test established that, quote, a person has been seized within the meaning of the Fourth Amendment only if, in view of all the circumstances surrounding the incident, a reasonable person would have believed that he was not free to leave. And, quote, that the test for existence of a show of authority is an objective one, not whether the citizen perceived that he was being ordered to restrict his movement, but whether the officer's words and actions would have conveyed that to a reasonable person. Here, although Officer Harris claims that Mr. Hines is not being detained, a court would likely find that his actions would have conveyed to a reasonable person that they were not free to leave. By physically blocking Mr. Hines from exiting the building and then ordering him to take a seat, Officer Harris communicated through a show of authority that Mr. Hines was being detained, and accordingly, seized him. You're not being detained? What's the, uh, yeah, these guys, these guys talk to him. What's the deal? We're just trying to figure out what your concern is. Okay, uh, so she gave her side, and you got a full scope of what she said. No, I'm asking you what your concern is. Why are you no, are you satisfied with her story, I guess? It's... I guess, yeah. Okay, I well, yeah, I, so, so you understand where, she, where she's coming from, and I'm, my side is I'm, I'm interested in finding a good parking spot. Okay. There's two lots right here. If you're looking for on square. Yeah, and, and if we could walk out there, I mean, Hold on. I'll show you where I'm parked. What? But where were you parked? Yeah, I'll show you. Just show me right here. You, oh, I, are, am I being detained for a no. crime? We're trying to figure out what's well, going on. Well, then it'd probably be easier to like point from the you know closer area to this parking where I'm at and where I can park uh, outside. You guys prefer to talk inside? Yeah, yeah, it's cold outside. Cold outside. Oh, it's because, okay, well, that's reasonable. We're not sure what your concern is. is what this is a two-hour parking. I'll get a okay. ticket for two-hour parking. You no, know what? I'll get a ticket for two-hour parking. Okay, so I guess I didn't ask the question directly. Will I get a, par a ticket for parking longer than two hours? The answer is no. Okay, well, right. then that settles it. All right. Do you have your driver's what, license on your report? What? What's, driver's license? What is it? A so I can identify you. Make sure you don't have any warrants. Well, I mean, first we have to establish a crime. No, I don't. Yeah, that's, making that's, contact with you is good enough. I've been yeah, that's here. fine, and I've you can make here. contact. Hey, I've been called hmm? here to Harris? make contact with you. Okay, yes, Officer Harris. Well, who you who's the caller? Failing, they are. Well, no, they were the buzzer. They, they buzzed, they right? You are failing to identify yourself to me and not give me your ID. Yeah, I'll we'll take you to jail. If you want to cry. Officer Harris claims that being called to make contact with an individual grants him the authority to identify the person he was called to contact. As we have discussed many times on ATA, individuals can only be legally required to identify themselves to officers if there is a reasonable suspicion of criminal activity, and the state has enacted a stop and identify statute that requires individuals to identify themselves in these situations. Therefore, citizens cannot be required to identify themselves simply because an officer makes contact with them, even in states that have passed stop and identify laws, and only some stop and identify laws authorize officers to arrest individuals for refusing to identify themselves. As the Supreme Court explained in the 2004 case of Heibel versus 6th Judicial District Court of Nevada, Humboldt County, quote, In some states, a suspect's refusal to identify himself is a misdemeanor offense or civil violation. In others, it is a factor to be considered in whether the suspect has violated loitering laws. In other states, a suspect may decline to identify himself without penalty. While Missouri has passed a stop and identify law, which is codified in section 84-710 of the Missouri Revised Statutes, it simply states that police officers, quote, have the power to stop any person abroad whenever there is reasonable ground to suspect that he is committing, has committed, or is about to commit a crime, and demand of him his name, address, business abroad, and whither he is going. It does not place a legal obligation on individuals to comply with an officer's demand for identification. So even if Officer Harris had a reasonable suspicion that Mr. Hines was was involved in criminal activity. Under Missouri's law, he had a right to decline to identify himself without penalty. However, it's important to note that in some situations, a 911 call alone can provide enough evidence to support detaining and identifying an individual in a state that requires citizens to comply with an officer's identification demands when the officer has reasonable suspicion of criminal activity. As the Supreme Court explained in the 2014 case of Navarrete versus California, the court has, quote, firmly rejected the argument that reasonable cause 
cause for an investigative stop can only be based on the officer's personal observation, rather than on information supplied by another person. And a 911 call can be sufficient to create a reasonable suspicion, as long as the call shows, quote, adequate indicia of reliability for the officer to credit the caller's account. Oh, you wanna, you wanna, you wanna charge me with a crime? No, you wanna identify you. yourself. We wanna identify you. Well, I don't. Where's that's I got. I'm crimes? sorry, but I have to enforce my Fourth Amendment rights. Okay. So, well, I don't you, understand. You have the right to. If identify you think, yourself to if you think your, if you think your prosecutor is gonna uh, back you up on that, they wanna follow through on this charge. Okay. Um, We'll see how those arguments go. Yeah. They tend not to go too well in your favor. Okay. Just doing this, well, what, you, a charge of what? Do you not want to give me your driver's license? Well, do you want to give me your driver's license? I don't have to give you my driver's well, license. Well, what's, I don't understand why you can't because give I'm me. I'm making contact with you. I'm making contact with you. I'm going to run and these sure two. no warrants. Are you are you asking ID sir, for your own curiosity? Sir, no, we're, we're, or we're, for the, the betterment listen, of the. We were called up here <clears> because there was someone that was irate. I raised, okay. Law. The reason we're asking for your ID is because a crime has been committed. We're not oh. trying to charge you with one. Well, if you think you want to follow through on charging me with a crime, I mean, see with your prosecutor, so, your city prosecutor would want to, you know, go through. So here's the question is, why don't you identify yourself? We'll all move on. Well, why don't we have a, why don't we understand, the establish the, the crime? Mm -hmm. And we got a fourth amendment here. We got to, we got to break, we got to get through here. All right. And I mean, there's steps to take with that. If if you wanna if you wanna fully charge me with a crime, then I guess you have to arrest me, you know, and and uh, follow through on that. Sheriff Place claims that Mr. Hines has committed a crime because they received reports that he was acting quote-unquote irate. However, he does not specify which crime Mr. Hines has committed. And there are some circumstances where being quote-unquote irate could rise to the level of a crime. Nonetheless, in this situation, it does not appear that Mr. Hines' conduct violated any of Missouri's laws. For example, Section 574.010 of the Missouri Revised Statute states that quote, a person commits the offense of peace disturbance if he or she, unreasonable reasonably and knowingly disturbs or alarms another person or persons by loud noise, offensive language addressed in a face-to-face -face manner to a specific individual, threatening to commit a felonious act against any person, fighting, or creating a nauseous and offensive odor. While it is possible that the City Hall employees were alarmed by Mr. Hines' behavior, he did not create loud noises, use offensive language, make threats, or fight. And it is more than questionable whether the employee's alarm was reasonable. Similarly, Section 565. 091 of the Missouri Revised Statutes defines the offense of harassment in the second degree, explaining that an individual commits this crime if, quote, he or she, without good cause, engages in any act with the purpose to cause emotional distress to another person. And Section 565.090 defines harassment in the first degree as engaging in the same behavior and actually causing the person to suffer emotional distress. Again, although it does appear that Mr. Hines' behavior created at least some level of emotional distress for the City Hall employees, there is absolutely no evidence that Mr. Hines instigated this interaction with the purpose of distressing them. And even if it could be argued that his behavior was meant to cause emotional distress, Mr. Hines was clearly within his First Amendment rights to complain about the parking situation. If that's what you, if you think that's what uh, your city prosecutor is going to uh, support you on, I mean, I, I, this is a contact thing. I just asked it about parking. Mm -hmm. This would be laughed out of court, Harris. Okay. But if you want to follow through. Yeah. Are you failing to give me your ID? Are you failing to give me your ID? Are you failing to give me your ID? Okay, I'm willing to exchange Face the wall. IDs. Face the wall. All right. Put your phone down. All right. Put your phone down. After Mr. Hines refused to give his ID to Officer Harris, Officer Harris placed him under arrest. Mr. Hines was held in the county jail overnight and charged with second-degree harassment and peace disturbance. The charges were dropped a few days later, but it is unclear whether Mr. Hines will be following up this encounter with legal action. Overall, the Bethany officers get an F for escalating an innocent encounter into a criminal arrest, displaying a fundamental misunderstanding of Missouri's identification laws, and for baselessly accusing Using Mr. Hines of committing a crime in an effort to gain control of the situation. Instead of approaching Mr. Hines in an effort to assist him or be of service in some capacity, the Bethany officers criminalized his behavior and ultimately arrested him for failing to comply with their unlawful orders. This interaction presented a perfect opportunity for the officers to welcome a citizen to their city and address any concerns that Mr. Hines had about the parking situation, and nothing that Mr. Hines did suggested that criminal activity was afoot. The Bethany officers blamed blatantly misrepresented several laws,
completely disregarded Mr. Hines's Fourth Amendment rights and failed to do any measure of investigation before conducting an arrest. And it's no wonder that the charges against Mr. Hines were promptly dismissed. This interaction highlights how quickly a small misunderstanding can escalate into an unnecessary arrest when members of law enforcement neglect to properly carry out their duties. Mr. Hines gets an A, because although he could have exercised his right to silence more effectively, he remained calm and collected throughout the encounter, maintained a reasonable balance between complying with the officer's orders and questioning his conduct, and challenged the legitimacy of the officer's actions without becoming rude or vulgar. At no point did Mr. Hines commit a crime or display any conduct that would warrant a police officer's involvement. And it is difficult to understand why the Bethany City Hall employees called 911 at all. Mr. Hines does not consider himself a First Amendment auditor, but he is also no stranger to police interactions. Mr. Hines lives in his car and travels all across the United States, stopping at various public parking lots to rest and enjoy whatever public facilities may be available. And this often results in the police being called to investigate his behavior. Mr. Hines often demonstrates a relatively thorough understanding of his rights, and certainly has a unique way of expressing himself and exercising those rights. Be sure to give Mr. Hines' channel your support. You can find a link in the description below. Let us know if there is an interaction or legal topic you would like us to discuss in the comments below. Thank you for watching, and don't forget to check out my second channel for even more police interaction content.